Alrighty, here we are. Eurobike day two is just about to start. Ray, how are we doing? We're doing good. We got coffee. We're, we're all set. Coffee and good, uh, good pretzels. Good decent pretzels. And good bread this morning. Fantastic stuff. So what are we off to right now? We are off to True Kinetics. We have, we have Hammerhead on the cars. We have Shimano. We have MyWoosh. We have everything else in between too. It's always one of those things where you plan every half hour. But in between times, the transit zones, we always come across Indeed. something new. It's going to be a busy day. I think I'll have some fun stuff too, right? Once we get through like our our staples, our, our vegetables, if you will, then uh, we get some... On some to dessert. Yeah. On to dessert. Okay, so a few things to cover off. Somebody said yesterday that I talk too fast. Come on. Get with me. Come on, dude. With Ray, I had to set, like, there's a benchmark that's been set. Yeah. And as I replied, the faster I talked, the quicker we got to dinner. And that worked very well. It's true. Uh, next up, no, we can't cover it all. There's a lot to cover here. 1,500 exhibitors. Ray, I think we both stick to our own lanes of tech, bike tech, things that we talk about on our channel anyway. Yeah, exactly. You won't see me covering, like, saddles, for example, or anything like that. Just the things that I, I normally cover are good. And there's, I mean, e-bikes everywhere, e-mountain bikes. Shimano did some pretty cool stuff with the e-mountain bike DI2 stuff. But look, all the other channels have all the other stuff as well. So GCN, cycling I'll tips, there's, everyone's here. <laughs> oh my word. It's an amazing pile of scooters. Um. And human <laughs> beings at the start. Let me just... Uh, that's probably 100 Sorry. meters from the entrance. So we'll have lots of time to finish off this video. Uh, yeah, Machine yesterday launched a radar. I said in my video yesterday that uh, Brighton's radar, which we can't speak of, um, was the only non-Garmin radar, but Machine released one yesterday themselves but, across their own socials. But they're just not here though. They're not here. Which gets so, to the next thing. Who else isn't here? Yeah. And why aren't they here? Yeah. So I think we got Wahoo's not here, Ceres is not here, which doesn't really spark too much, but Wahoo, Ceres hasn't usually had a big presence here. Usually there's been like a shipper booth. Uh, Zwift is not here. No Zwift. Um, I guess RGT on behalf of Wahoo is not here. Uh, Ruby is here though, and let's see, like we saw no train row, but they don't usually do train shows either, so no surprise. Uh, I think really the big two would be Zwift and Wahoo not being here. Usually quite big booths, quite uh, most uh, most years Wahoo have had an announcement, a trainer. Yep. And uh, we saw through what 15, 16, 17, 18 these new trainers, the revisions coming along. So yeah. Yeah, everything's out of band, I guess, given the current climate of things and chips. Yeah, these companies had to mostly make decisions back, you know, like in the midwinter or so. And that's a tough time to try to judge this far out. So Ray Ruby was here. They showed you a few things uh, coming soon. Yep, exactly. They've got a couple things coming up over the next uh, few weeks, yep. months, whatever. Um, so more on that soon. Uh, they're a good example of where they were here, they have people running around, uh, but they have what's like a sort of private booth. So basically oh, they're just... That's why I didn't... Uh, is it hidden away? I didn't see them at all. It's totally just, hidden away. Okay. Um, which is super common for companies that, um, you know, want to be have a presence here, but don't necessarily want to deal with the cost and complexity of having an on-floor booth. And they just have people come to this little, you know, basically just a meeting room is all it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so... All industry players are all here. So why not yeah. have something to, to meet and greet? Yep, exactly. Even if it's behind the scenes and not marketed or advertised or anything like yep. that. Uh, another topic, uh, Zwift rolled out an encryption update yesterday. It's sort of off topic a little bit, but Zwift related. Um, encryption update that broke a few third party apps. Uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think Zwift needs just to, uh, to kind of get over the hump and have a third party API to fix this sort of thing. An like, encrypted API? Yep. So this... something that's compliant, but ultimately, like, they're big enough. They should have had this years ago. And now's a good time when things are kind of quiet, if you will, in the, in the like, indoor trainer world over the next year yeah. or so to do that kind of stuff. I think the compliance thing is why they put the encryption on as well. So they had to yep. do, I think Google Play is enforcing that. Yep. Uh, but if you use Zwift Activity Monitor, ZAM, Probably not going to work for the next little while. No. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, Ray, before we get through the uh, the front door and start our day, one word I haven't seen here at Eurobike this week, and I'm glad I haven't. Oh well, acronym yeah. NFT. No NFTs. None. I, I'm I'm really happy not to have seen anything around that at all. <laughs> um, that's obviously a topic for a different day, but people have got the memo. I also haven't seen AI really either. I mentioned very much. Well. <sighs> Yeah, there's no yeah, the software side of things is a little bit, I guess, missing. So yeah, but it's yeah. good. I don't, I don't mind missing either of those two acronyms. However, there is a battery forum taking place, which is kind of relevant. Yeah, well, I feel like it'd be fun to go in there and just have a chat with people about all sorts of battery things, like all these little silly questions that you always kind of wonder. Someone in there can answer this. Hey, maybe we can get Hammerhead in there to talk about battery capacity and battery burn rates. <laughs> Oh, speaking of, we're meeting with those guys in just a few minutes. Yep. And with that, we'll leave it there. We'll be back shortly, but once we're through these doors. How you doing? Good, sir. Yeah, right. GCN check.
So Ray's behind me here trying to negotiate, um, being able to talk about the Brighton Radar. Cats out of the bag, guys, it's on the stand. Your brochure has all the details. Um, keen to see the outcome of the meeting that's happening behind me. Stay tuned. I'll be back with Ray to find out <laughs> what's going on. So Ray, how did you go with Brighton? Now, were you allowed to talk about the radar that we've already talked about? Uh, they do not want to talk about the specs of the radar and the specs that are... Published in the brochure that I got yesterday? Uh, look, I don't know. Their, their specs are, are just absolutely astounding. They should be running up and down the halls naked, explaining how amazing their I specs are. I tried that before, I got in trouble. That yeah, is. I know, that's, that's how we ended up in jail last night. So, <laughs> um, I don't get it. They, they want to talk about their bike trainer, which is fine. Uh, the trainer's, you know, I don't know, 899. It's like basically a kicker core, essentially. Okay. Um, and so that's interesting in a sense, but I think it's, it's just another, look, it's, it's a very similar product that's out there. Um, but the radar, at its price point that they're talking about, uh, and at its battery life, are absolutely bonkers, and they just, they need to run with that message. Yeah. Yeah, look, you, you can't put something on a stand in public and hand leaflets. To, we report on the things that are pretty cool. That product is pretty cool. Um, but again, wait till we get one to test it out or they're out there and other people have said, yeah, we'll I think see how it goes. That is super important though. Like, uh, yes, battery life is awesome and, oh, yeah, it's really cool. Um, battery life is awesome and, uh, you know, price point is awesome. But what we don't know is whether or not it's any good as a product. And radar is one of those things, there is zero tolerance for failure. Like, yes. it can't fail once. And you can have false positives, which we see on Garmin Barrier Radar that are usually explainable, like Trees reflections move. and stuff like that. Yep. yep, That's not a problem. You can never have a false negative on radar. The moment you have that, throw it in the garbage. Yep, like that's, absolutely. It's as simple as that. Um, and that's something that we don't know yet, and we'll test, and ultimately battery life is probably gonna be a factor as to how they're, like that's the things we have to, to figure out. Like, how do they get that battery life in that small package? Same uh, weight, or it's a few grams lighter, I think, than the RTL uh, 510, yeah, 515. slightly lighter, and it's uh, same size, but with, again, battery life that is astronomically higher. Um, like, it, it'll outlast pretty much every bike computer out there, I think. Yeah. Um, so, again, they gotta get it right, though. If, it's, if yeah. the radar misses a single car, it's over. Oh, there's our, our destination up there. All right. We're up. What are we on? We've got Rotor. we got Rotor. Let's go. Next. Okay, quick update from the Rotor stands. Not a lot new on the Inspider 2. And to, sorry, it's the Twin Power. Twin Power. Twin Power update for 2022. Uh, no major changes. Same accuracy, same battery life, same form factor. Aesthetics have changed a little bit on the crank. I think there was some behind the scenes change that the chipsets and things used. Yeah. That's about it. Oh, and the app. There's a new app yeah. coming out from Rotor as well. So. By the way, here's the uh, the Maiwu stage you were talking about with the eSports event. Ooh. They've got very small fans. If, you, if you're ever doing any kind of riding indoors, you want a big fan, especially, so it's probably 25 degrees in here, very warm. I'm not sure. I pull it all apart. See, that's Maybe. what Brighton needed. No yeah. photo. <laughs> I, can, I think this is going to go on one of our Instagram accounts in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> it's stupid. I don't even know I'm taking a photo, but now I want to take a photo of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sorry. almost a wrap on the end of day two, or middle of day two, end of day two. God, it's, we've crammed a whole day into a morning. Yep. Uh, Check Ray, out this one here. It's a tandem cargo bike. It looks incredibly unstable just then. How would you, what's the safety factor of that? What if you crashed in one of those? How? I don't know. I mean, but look at all these people like this guy is doing, Bouncy. using it as a, uh, a camera rig right there. That's pretty awesome. I, uh, I look very unsure right now. So you're going to get a random mix of everything here. Oh, it's a pump track too. Oh, yeah. Which way? We need to go out that way. I think our best go? bet is there and then the, the, the thingies and then see the, the slow moving people. We, can, we need to go the opposite direction. Oh, no, yeah, okay, we can walk up here and through here. Yeah, yeah I, we I know, that, that's the bad way. Okay. This place is 
it's harder than Wolfenstein 3D. Grew up playing that. Uh, what else, Ray? We got some. Um, we got some specs on the Brighton trainer, so we did get to check that out briefly. I think I'm not sure if you talked about it yesterday. Or no, not. I skipped through it because my B-roll was so short. I, I just mentioned they had a trainer, but we had no more. I didn't have it for the detail. Uh, quick rundown on the trainer availability. What uh, we... They said autumn for that. Okay. Um, so fall sometime, 8.99. Uh, I think. We can start talking about it for our basic kicker core. Um, they've got a whole bunch of cassette compatibility, pretty much the standard that you'd expect. Uh, and plus Bluetooth Smart. Again, it's kind of like a run of the mill vanilla trainer. Um, what we were talking to yesterday, someone basically said about not Brighton, but someone else was talking about their trainer, and they said they kind of they they weren't aiming to like be revolutionary. It's just an option in the market that people might choose. Um, but they also understood that their their product wasn't necessarily the most impressive product out there, but it wasn't the worst either. It's a good medium price point sort of thing. I feel like that's the same with the Brighton Train. They like, want to be in the game. They want to be in the game. Yep. Um, I personally wouldn't want to be in this game right now. <laughs> this way. Ooh. In the navigation game, I am not. We lost Ray. Hang on. Yeah, I personally wouldn't want to be in the trainer game right now, but I think, you know, the more I look at the market, 2022 to 2023 will be a quiet, like, buckle up and hold on sort of year in terms of if you can make your business sustain until next fall this time, um, you know, 2023, summer and fall, I think 2023, 2024 will be a good year for trainer companies. Like, at that point, people have a reset, and you can kind of, from there, it's back up again in terms of goodness. So then I hope we're seeing more than just refreshes. I hope we're seeing onboard Wi-Fi. I hope we're seeing, well, auto calibration is now, well, it's a standard now for most. Yep. Uh, but also the ability to choose your, your cassette or free hub yeah. uh, upon purchase. But I think it's important that companies have to keep on innovating during this time frame. Oh, right? yeah. Otherwise, you end up effectively like what Sarah said. Sarah, exactly. Right? <laughs> Which is just that Hammered. you, you kind of keep an hammer. Oh. <laughs> I, I, that's that's the fourth one I pulled out this week. They're getting worse. They are, they are getting worse. Your dad jokes are, 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 are on point. Is there's something. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think you have to innovate in this time frame, even if you're not going to have high unit volumes, and you just you design it in accordance with that, um, and so you, you figure that all out. So, anyways, we saw them. We saw Rotor, which we talked about. Yes. Uh, we saw. With the movie, uh, I'll put a separate video out, possibly on the. M move ya, move ya, move ya, pedally. Yeah. I'll talk about that in that video, Ray, your quick take on the pedaling that's not pedaling. I... We're confused. Yeah, I get it. Like, I think like a lot of things at Eurobike, there are stuff that 100% do not apply to us. Like all the cargo bike stuff we just walked through. E I use a car stuff. bike. Yeah, e-mount bikes, all the e, all the e things. Um, I use an e-cargo bike, right? Yeah. Would that cargo bike be useful for you where you live? Where you live? Probably not, in, right? I'm infrastructure for uh, it, yeah. We're about to have a fail up here, but it's all right. Um, and that same is true for the, the <laughs> funky you. pedal bike, right? In the sense that for what I am and as an able-bodied person, um, it's not useful for me. But yep. if someone, as they discussed, like range of motion issues, et cetera, um, that sort of thing can be just the same as walking effectively, but now you go a lot faster because it is E-assisted. Uh, I think there's, there's cool stuff there. It doesn't have to always like work for, for us or Everyone. for the mainstream. Yeah, right? maybe, yeah. And, you know, we talked with, um, Feedback Sports about their uh, little you know trainer for basically warm ups at a, at a race. And the he's omnium, like, the omnium, omnium. The yep. little, the, what we thought the kicker roller was based on, but really kind of wasn't because the kicker roller was an entirely different beast. Yep, and, uh, and that's what he was saying. Like for him, that was something he did for himself that as a niche to be able to walk or to be able to warm up before a race years ago, and. He's made a nice little niche out of it in terms of something that you know the people want to buy, and it's not going to be for everyone. Like, I don't, I don't have one. I don't go to races and run up ahead of time on a trainer. I just jump in the water first, and then do a swim, and then <laughs> I do a bike and run. Um, but there are things that will have you know small appeal, um, that, but still work on a scale of you know, being global. Uh, market. Sorry, raise out of the picture a bit. My arm's getting tired, and it's, it's dipping down a little bit. I can, I can hold oh, your. There can, we go. I can hold your stick. Woo. Well, hang on. <laughs> the is Do you like it raw? Do I like? <laughs> yeah. Here's the screenshot of that there. Um, by the way, uh, we it just... has context. Has do not take us. Out, or actually, take us out of context. That's it's, fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will say the like things have gotten better at Eurobike. When I started coming to Eurobike years ago, um, you saw all the things. Like you saw the the so-called booth babes, right? Where they're just hiring models yeah, that have yeah. no awareness of cycling, no anything at all. Um, even sometimes no clothing, like just painted on. Yep. All that is gone. I've not seen a single bit of that this year or even last year. As it should be. 
Yep. yep. It's, so, it's back to for everyone. Inclu- uh, that, yeah, that just didn't have a place in this era, and it's not here anymore, which is good. No, it's good to see, and it's also good to see like um, the equal representation of women from like pro teams and stuff like that here, and yep. being you know uh, basically uh, brand ambassadors is all that, and even brand ads like we saw an ad this morning from Hammerhead, for example, that's their spot running on Eurosport uh, right now to the tour, and that was just solely on a uh, women's cyclist, and so. True Kinetics, their poster child, and a Vanderbergen. Yep. So, so, yep. It's cool to see. And my other, it's pretty heavy to look like that for it a long is. time. It's the media uh, mod. It's not. It's the Volta stick that I've got with the extra battery, which makes this a little heavier. It's just our cycling arms. Yeah, that's that's probably it. See, mountain bikers would be hiking this everywhere. Yeah. But no, a good wrap up for today. Uh, whipped around. Sorry if we missed anything that you were looking forward to, but as I said, there's. Look at all the other coverage. We saw GCN walking past. They're here with yep. their army of people. Busy, busy, busy. Uh, James from Cycling Tips is around with his camera as well. So it's so much to cover and like there's a lot of us covering it all in our own little way. Yep, so, I'm looking yep. up our list of our photos. This is how we how we track what happened today. So photos wise, we just did I see the air tag, the knob. Do we talk uh, about no, that? we didn't talk about the Nog Scout. Oh, really? Okay, that's, that's, a separate, that's a separate thing. video. Oh, I'm gonna try and work uh, the algorithm with that. Okay. No, no, we'll talk about it now. So Nog put out a product or will be releasing a product called the Scout, which is well. If you've seen this channel, you know the air tag holders on bikes that go under the bottle cage, 3D printed air tag holders. You stick an air tag in there, call it done. This thing is kind of the same form factor, it sits under a bottle cage, if that's where you'd like to put it. It has its own electronics that is compatible with the Find My Network. So USB, it's fully licensed from Apple. They've uh, got the licensing just yesterday. Yep. I'll tell you what, they would have been sweating that and releasing a product and not having the Yeah, the, the, Apple gets pretty okay. upset about that. The OK Go, yeah, but yep. that's been certified by Apple, so that's good to sell. Unlike we saw on the Muckoff product, which didn't say, I mean, they didn't need to license the, the, um, the holder. This product obviously needed to be licensed, it is. Uh, so it is a bike security thing. Now the difference between this is it has a bike alarm with it. So it has an accelerometer, you can arm it with your phone or by pressing it. If your bike moves at the cafe, beep, 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 beep. Anyhow, more on that soon. Ray, your thoughts on this device? I, I'm, I'm already looking, I, I, we've got them in our bags. So yeah. I am super jazzed about it. Uh, it's uh, right now we use air tags in our cargo bikes and other bikes that we have um, just to track things. But uh, you know, someone can relatively easily remove that air tag if they can find them all. Um, and, and look, you can hide an air tag, but it's still an air tag. You can see the thing. Yeah. These, I mean, it, it's just this little strip. I it's, mean, you could say this is a security strip, but you'd, you'd never really know. Like, opportunistic thieves will not it's know a, what they're looking for. It's a deterrent, right? It's, uh, you know, you can use a Bluetooth scanner to find an air tag on, on a bike today. If and it's a, you're looking, it's still difficult. And I difficult. think the smart, the smart um, bike thieves are doing that now, right? They're using Bluetooth scanners to, do, to narrow it on. They find it, they yank it out of 10. And yes, you can, you can yank this out, right? If you had a hammer with you, I'm sure it'll snap right off. I can just whack this thing right off the thing. Mm-hmm. But again, it's it's steps. It's it's minimizing or maximizing the the number of things that a thief has to do when they're just trying to be in and out very very quickly. Yep. Um, so, anyways, uh, did we talk about True Kinetics? Actually, the ride experience and all that? Mm, I don't believe so. True okay. Kinetics again. This is holy, the holy holy. Look at all these, dude. We can do this. I need a photo. Maybe Ray and I could jump in this on the way. Back. Uh, True Kinetics, I talked about those guys yesterday. I think they had their launch yesterday. New trainer, virtual gears. Now, virtual gears were different than what I thought. Virtual gears, I thought virtual gears meant that you suck front chain ring, you stuck it in the back ring, on the, a cog on the back, and you had some other shifting mechanism changing virtual gears like you do with a smart bike with a belt drive. Not the case. Virtual gearing allows you to set a preferred cassette type. So if you had, a, say, an 1121 on the trainer, you can configure that to be, say, a 1050. And as you change gears, it knows somehow to change the ratios virtually. We need to know more about this. We need to test it out. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see how it works in, in yeah. the real world because like when we were testing out and they admitted the bike that they had, they launched the, shif- the they, shifting was shy. shifting was garbage for any number of reasons. It wasn't their trainer. Yeah. It wasn't their, it wasn't their bike. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't, um, anyways, but the reality is that is some people's bikes, right? Like, yeah. And so in this case, the, the virtual shifting did not work at all. Um, when I was trying it in multiple gears and stuff. Um, and they're saying because the bike shifting was garbage, but I think that is probably true, but it's also true that that's just the reality of people's bikes, that they won't always be perfect. Yeah. So I think that's an element. Um, it's uh, still a bit confusing, hard to wrap my head around exactly what it's doing at the end of the day. That's what we need to clear up. And that's why having one and, and poking and prodding it ourselves and 
yeah, talking to the guys a little bit more than just what was on the stand. For me, yeah, my, vir my idea of virtual gearing was exactly what we get with smart bikes. You know, the one, one yeah. gear ratio, one physical gear ratio. And he showed that on the but, app. I put, we put some app screenshots yeah. right here to make your B-roll life more visible. Um, <laughs> you can see that. You can configure all that there. And it is, so it is cool. I just, we just need to understand it and use it a bit more to, to make sense of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we saw that. Uh, what else did we... We need to go through our photo booth and have a look. Photo booth's okay, uh, we did it. Okay, so we also, I did my booth today. I finally jumped on that yep. briefly. And uh, the 3D box world with the moving thing that I talked about yesterday. I did do some did 3D you, boxes. Did you feel sick um, like I did? That was... That was, that was trippy. Uh, oh yeah. Like I get, there's a lot of things that you do in trade shows that have no relevance in the real world. And this is absolutely one of them, yep. um, but it's still cool. It's still one of those, like you look at it and go, yes, that is amazing. I don't have a living room like that. Um, but then in, in practice and reality, that probably cost $100,000 and it's not, <laughs> not viable. Now here's a tidbit, Ray said, the booth looked very much like Zwift. It was like the old Zwift booth. Uh, the guy arranging it all, Jacob, he was the guy who arranged it for Zwift last time. So uh, I think he just bought over exactly what he did last time. Nice looking booth. Yeah, uh, nice upstairs. Yeah, they uh, they spent some solid money on that booth. Oh yeah, um, on both the space for it, the design for it, the all the things. Coffee machine. Money was spent. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the app itself, uh, you know, visually it's a fairly clean looking app uh, in terms of user interface. It's come a they've, long way. They've definitely really doubled down on the structured training side of it. Uh, so automatic sync from Training Peaks and today's plan and uh, trainer day. Trainer row. Trainer day. Trainer day. Um, pulls in. Dude. pulls into those uh, workouts automatically on your calendar. They have a calendar, like all that's cool. And the training plans themselves, uh, you can start a training plan midway through a different phase, which is kind of a smart idea. He's basically like, hey, if you've got adding an event to your calendar and all of a sudden you just added that and it's like eight weeks out, you don't want to start a training plan from day zero. You want to start in X phase, X build phase, etc. cetera. Yeah. And you can just choose that right then and there and jump in it. So that's pretty cool. Um, their world, they've got two worlds right now. One is Arabia. Uh, which is based on basically a blend of Bahrain and UAE. And the second one is um, something in Saudi, but they're trying not to say the word Saudi. They keep calling it KSA, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, and I think that gets a part of the challenge they're going to have, um, attracting a Western market. Their goal here at Eurobike is to break into the European market and you can sign up as an account, um, whether you're on in Europe or anywhere in the world for that matter. And they talk about how they have a big group of people in Colombia. Uh, we'll make it. Um, but right now, the platform is very Middle Eastern focused because that's presumably funded by the UAE government um, as part of like Team UAE Emirates, etc. That whole thing is all intertwined together. Colmago. Yep. And I'm not sure how that's going to be received by a very Western audience. Uh, and starting off with the game itself, like there's no element of seeing a European or a North America in any other location. And that's, they say they're working on that. That's, um, yeah. So. That's the reality of the game itself. That's one of the questions I had to both Jacob and Kevin was, how do you westernize this? Not being, yeah. I mean, let's have that conversation. That's exactly what people will look at and say, well, it's, 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 I don't, can't relate to this. Yeah, you can't relate um, to it. There's, you know. You put Perry Roubaix in there. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and so they say coming in the fall, they're doing a world build out with Columbia um, because I guess they've got a big sponsorship presence out there and lots of users in Columbia. So they've got that coming. And then after that, they're looking to do in Australia as well as Belgium. Right. Uh, some world creations there. So it'll be interesting to see that all manifest itself and then ultimately users. And that's one thing I asked, you know, in looking at the thing, the platform as I'm sitting there in the booth, there's not many users on the platform, not many people coming by. And I asked how many users, how many accounts they have, any any metric. And I don't mind if they don't want to give me paid users, that's fine. I, no one else wants to get paid users, but most people give you accounts created. Like Zwift yeah. will often yeah. tout, you know, more than a million accounts created, right? Um, Crickets. And they were very, very hesitant to do that. Not hesitant, they were adamant they were not gonna do that. So wow. yeah. um, to me, that's that's a huge part of why Zwift has succeeded and why other platforms have ultimately failed. So you've gotta have users and I'm not sure how they're gonna bridge that gap. Tough times, tough times. Ah, uh, that's probably about it, I think. What about, that's, we'll, we'll have more to talk about, I guess. You'll have a few other little tidbits here and there and a few posts coming up. Yep. Uh, I'm keen to have a chat about that, uh, the up, down, moving bike thing, it, it's sort of, I've got to think more about what that actually meant as pedaling. Don't think it's for me. I'll talk more about that in the other video. Anyhow, with that, we'll leave it there. Thanks, Ray, for coming along for this one. Sorry with the framing. You're too tall and my arm is too weak. You're too bad. We'll be back with more soon. But yeah. uh, for now, enjoy Ray's contents, mine, and as I said, GCN, Cycling are also here. So enjoy the content and we shall see you soon. Yep, have a good one.